special place. With its high annual rainfall, rich volcanic soil, and near perfect weather, it's easy to see why people from around the globe vacation here year after year after year. For the Balinese people who are lucky enough to call this place home, these ideal conditions combined with their hard work nearly always gives them tangible results that they can keep. It has also given them a luxurious amount of time to pursue the arts, resulting in a culture that surpasses even the landscape with its simplicity and its beauty. But there are nearly 20,000 other islands in Indonesia, and the rain clouds choose to pass a few of them by. We recently heard of two orphanages that are in these dry areas, and that their physical needs are very great. We will first take you to one of the poorest villages on the island of Sumba, and then to the orphanage there as well. Tori has an amazing story. She used to live at the orphanage in Tuka, Bali, and has now recently graduated from a university in Java. She's spending her first year volunteering at the very orphanage that helped her years ago. Okay, that was exciting. That's one of the best landings I've ever had, depending on how you look at it. But um, anyways, we, we don't have a phone connection here on Sumba, uh, but we think we found a driver who kind of knows where we're going. So anyways, follow me. We'll see where we end up. Our box? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Sumba. After seeing how brown and dry Sumba was from the airplane, we were really surprised to see so much green as we drove away from the airport. That false impression lasted only a few hundred yards so as we immediately got into the drier areas. We were then quickly reminded of the needs of these people and the very reason we had come there. Having already heard that the children at the orphanage had been surviving on a diet of only corn and cassava roots, we asked our driver to take us to a marketplace where we could buy some food right away. We were pretty shocked at the conditions there, and even more so when he told us that that was the best market in the entire area. Almost all of the food on Sumba has to be brought in by boat from the surrounding islands. Without any refrigeration, most of the food we saw was already at some stage of being spoiled. When we asked if anybody sold chicken, they pointed us off in this direction. It didn't look very promising at first, but then 
Sure enough, there it was. The poultry section. After lots of talk and negotiating, Tori was able to pick out the best ones. <laughs> then we set off to see if we could find some fruits and vegetables. We were actually really excited when we found a stall that had just gotten a bunch of great looking food the night before. We bought as much of it as we could and then we even found a truck that had just pulled up with a new load of rice and boxes of noodles. We ended up buying a lot more food than we could even fit in the car. So to make some room, we sent some of the food and a few boxes of clothes ahead of us to the orphanage. We were told that the village of Letikonda was one of the poorest and driest areas on the island and that many of the people there were very sick. When we asked to be taken there, our driver strongly recommended against it. We were surprised, but he told us that it was a Muslim village and that they might not understand why we wanted to go there. He said that there might be big problems. Hearing this made us each a bit nervous, but our team decided that this was the very reason we had come to Sumba, to see in person exactly what conditions that these people were living in. So we drove on. Once we got past the gates of the village, we were told by three men that we should not be there and we needed to have permission from the village leader. They showed us where he lived and then we spent the good part of an hour explaining that we had just simply brought food with us and we wanted to give it to them if anyone needed it. After a while, he seemed to soften all of a sudden and then he really started to open up to us. He explained how hard it was for him as the leader of these people. He wished that he could find a way to get clean food and water for them. He also told us of how he wanted to be able to get a small hospital there, as many of the people had severe cholera, and it was hard for them to make the one-hour trip to town for treatment. People with even more serious conditions had not made it to town at all. The people of Letikonda had left a lasting impression on each of us who went. It was amazing to see two very different people groups united in making a plan to meet the needs of this village. After one more stop at the marketplace, we were very excited to be able to meet the children at the orphanage. There was 13 very young girls there, each with their own precious story. Megawati is a very popular former president of Indonesia. She had donated a large, beautiful new building to this orphanage when she was in office. They now only need funding as the building and volunteer staff can handle up to 200 children. The sisters said that they would like to reach out to even thousands of other children with food and clothing in just the surrounding area. They just need financial help now. Hello. The sisters had already prepared a meal from the food we had sent ahead earlier. It was so very humbling to share a meal with these children. It was the first time that they had eaten something other than their diet of corn and cassava root in many months. Yeah, like coming over there. When we asked the sisters what they needed most, their answers were actually very similar to what we had just heard at the village. A 
They said their greatest need is food and clean drinking water, followed by school and medical fees. Each such a basic need that I often take for granted myself. They didn't tell us. <laughs> now, never in a thousand years would have I expected such a welcome from <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, it's just now five in the morning, and uh, everybody's been up for about 30 minutes now. They get up at 4:30 in the morning. Their well has run dry, so the first thing they do in the morning is uh, go down and get water for the day, and uh, that's where they take their showers as well. Um, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah, Sisa untuk cuci baju 
Kalau orang di sini caranya begini. Nah, tapi kalau saya ya maju karena saya cara budaya. Anak ini saya temukan di bukit puncak gunung batu di namanya di Tuntun ya. Di Tuntun. Dia kecil waktu itu seperti anak umur tiga tahun saja. Lalu setiap hari saya lewat, saya lihat di posisi yang sama. Lalu saya curiga, saya dekatin. Ternyata anak ini sebatang kara. Mama telah dipanggil Tuhan dan Bapa mungkin kawin lagi tidak tahu persis. Kita tidak tahu. Dalam keadaan sendirian. Ada tetangga hanya berani datang membantu beri makan. Mengapa? Sebenarnya semua orang mau pelihara. Cuma karena hidrosipalos benjolan ini, benjolan ini, benjolan, air kotoran dari otaknya ke sini, kemudian meremes menjadi kencing di sini dan kencingnya tu bau sekali. Ya, itu. Tapi baunya itu karena kotoran dari otak. Begitulah anak ini sekarang kita pelihara. Dia mencicip tujuannya supaya dia besok sekolah. Sekarang sudah sekolah kelas berapa ya? Oh kelas 4. Sudah kelas 4 nanti di, diusahakan mungkin bisa komputer untuk masa depannya. Bisa membantu mengetik di komputer. Kalau ada orang minta tolong diketikkan skripsi itu harapannya. Nanti dia otaknya jalan, dia bisa sekolah normal nanti, ya dah, ya dah. Nah sudah itu. Jadi itu yang menjadi menyebabkan saya senang karena kita bisa memanusiakan mereka, kita bisa pelihara baik-baik sehingga masa depannya pun ada harapan untuk masa depan. Itu, ini jadi yang lumpuh seperti itu. Lalu yang sangat-sangat saya butuhkan adalah bahan makanan, bahan makanan dan obat itu yang sangat saya butuhkan. Lalu apa biaya sekolah seperti alat-alat tulis. Nah, kemudian kalau ada operasi itu biasanya butuh dana. Tapi dana itu saya buat kalau saya butuh berupa uang. Saya buat proposal dengan mengatakan saya butuh uang untuk anak operasi anak. Kalau dia operasi mata, ya saya katakan operasi. Kalau dia operasi hidrosipalos seperti anak yang sudah titip di kampung, itu biayanya cukup besar karena harus berobat di Jawa. Yang menyedihkan hanya sedikit kalau anak itu pas nakal-nakalnya, barang-barang cepat rusak. Sepatu cepat hilang, sandal hilang, karena mereka banyak bermainnya untuk anak-anak mental itu sedikit membawa susah memang, karena pikiran mereka tidak menjangkau. Jadi kita modal saya sekarang berpasrah dan percaya nanti pasti Tuhan akan memberi. Marilah kita bersyukur kepada Tuhan atas kebaikannya kita diberi. 
uh, anggota badan yang sempurna, yang lengkap, sehingga kita bisa mengabdi Tuhan, mencari, melayani Tuhan melalui sesama maupun keluarga. Beda dengan anak-anak kita yang di Panti Handicap Children. Mereka tidak sempurna, mereka ada kekurangan. Entah matanya yang tidak bisa melihat, kakinya yang tidak bisa berjalan, mulutnya yang tidak bisa berbicara. Nah, kita perlu bersyukur karena kita lengkap. Lalu kita, apa yang bisa kita buat terhadap mereka yang kurang ini? Kita bisa membantu mereka dengan berkat yang kita terima dari Tuhan. Dengan berkat sedikit, kita bagi sedikit, dan Tuhan akan selalu ingat akan berkat yang itu. Dan Tuhan pun tidak akan henti-hentinya memberi kita berkat. Demikian juga anak-anak yang handicap ini, karena keberadaannya dia hanya bisa berdoa, mengeluh, mengesah kepada Tuhan, dan Tuhan selalu mendengarkan doa-doa mereka. Dan apakah yang mereka doakan tidak lain, selalu mendoakan para pembagi berkat atau donatur yang telah memberikan hati kasih kepada mereka. Sehingga terjadilah timbal balik. Tuhan mendengarkan doa orang-orang yang sungguh-sungguh berkekurangan dan Tuhan memberikan kepada mereka yang bisa mencari berkat itu yang kemudian dibagikan kepada mereka yang membutuhkan. Mari silahkan datang kunjungilah kami yang kurang sempurna bukanlah karena kesalahan Tuhan tetapi kami lahir karena memang mungkin karena waktu mama mengandung ada virus yang masuk sehingga mengganggu janin-janin janin yang di dalam perut mama sehingga kami lahir dalam keadaan kekurangan jadi bukanlah salah guna mengandung bukanlah salah Tuhan yang mencipta tapi bisa juga karena saat mama mengandung mama menderita sakit yang mengandung virus yang akhirnya mengganggu ke janin di mana kami berada di dalam rahim mama kami menerima, anak-anak semuanya menerima keberadaan mereka dan mereka merasa tidak berkekurangan karena kasih yang mereka terima dari para donatur. Sekian, terima kasih. It was a five hour drive back to the airport, but no one talked very much. We were all thinking about the people we had just met and what could be done for them. We left them with food for at least a month and some clothes, but there was still so much more that they needed. Surgeries, school fees, a deeper well. It was very hard to say goodbye. Situations like the orphanages in Timor and Sumba really do need a lot of help. We found that it works best when this help comes from not just one person, but a large group of people. It was just a few years ago that the situation at the orphanage in Bali wasn't very good. The sisters spent much of their energies worrying about the basic needs of the children. Because so many people have now pitched in and help, they're able to not have to worry about things like food and clothing, even school and medical fees. A lot of people, each doing a little, has made a huge difference in the lives of these children. 
actually as well as the people who have helped them. Everyone involved has experienced change in a very good way.
This is a, a huge thank you to the literally hundreds of people from all over the globe who have helped make the orphanage in Tuca what you see today. Uh, it, it, it couldn't have been this way without your help. So a special thank you to the Auntie Joes and Marshas and, and Pete from the UK and so many other people who helped uh, make this place what you see today. It's literally because of each one of you who have helped that you see them in these wonderful schools and on sports teams and uh, just even the condition of the buildings that they live in now. It's just unbelievable how much change you've brought about. It's our hope to see the same type of change brought about in the orphanages in Sumba and Timor. And I know that it's not possible for it to happen overnight. Right now, in fact, their, their greatest need is just simple basic nutrition. They've been living off of diets of almost purely corn and cassava root. And very, very, very rarely do they see any type of protein, uh, and often not even much variety in um, what little vegetables they find as well. Um, so at the end of this video, you'll see their addresses listed, and that's their postal address, anything that you send to them, uh, dried fruit, dried vegetables, uh, maybe nuts of different sorts for protein. Uh, that's the best thing to send right now, just to get them out of their current situation. Once their basic needs are taken care of, we'll keep you updated on what we've moved on to next as far as their schooling, surgeries, that type of thing. Um, and we'll update you on a, a regular basis on the website. It's www.thegiveteam.com. And if you want to get updates delivered to your email box, so you don't miss any of them, uh, just subscribe up in the right, top right hand corner. Now I know not everyone watching this video is in a position to even begin to help out with the physical needs of these places that you've seen. But uh, I just want you to not feel discouraged. A lot of times you can think that you've got nothing to offer, but as you, you've seen in this uh, video we've just shown you, uh, it's amazing to see how far someone like Tori came, someone who once lived at the orphanage himself and is now just graduated from university. And, uh, now she's back helping the very place that helped her to begin with. Um, 
that all started with one small step. It didn't happen overnight. So no matter who you are or where you've came from, uh, know that you've got amazing, unique skills and gifts that are uh, one of a kind. Only you have them. The world has a lot of hurts that need healing. And you'd be amazed at how many of them uh, you can help heal just by taking a small step. So start today, just wherever you're at. You don't necessarily have to go out and start a group, but if there are causes in your neighborhood, chances there are, Food Bank, Salvation Army, there's all kinds of great organizations that help people right in your area. Uh, start by setting up chairs. Uh, lighten the load of the people who are shouldering a lot of the, uh, the needs in your community, and you'll be amazed at the change you see come about. Not always right away in the people that you're serving, but most of the time the change starts right here. Give it a shot.